Now, over the past two weeks, hundreds of scientists around the world have been coordinating their efforts to try and capture an image of a black hole. Not just any black hole, they're hoping to get a picture of Sagittarius A. This supermassive black hole is at the centre of our Milky Way galaxy. It has a mass four million times greater than our Sun, and it's 26,000 light years away. That's a long way away. But it can't be seen by optical telescopes because it's shielded by dust and gas. So, to get an image of it, the scientists are using a network of eight radio telescopes. And these are located in Spain, Mexico, Chile, the US and Antarctica. Well, once that data is combined, it's hoped the image will help us understand how black holes work and how the universe fits together. Well, with us now is Heino Falke, professor at the Radboud University in the Netherlands. He's live with us from Granada in Spain, and he's one of the scientists involved in capturing that image of the black hole. Heino Falke, good to have you with us. It sounds like serious stuff. I mean, you're trying to see something that's optically invisible. It's shrouded by dust and gas. So this is going to make the project quite challenging, quite difficult, isn't it? It, indeed it is, and uh, I think that's the first time we've assembled so many telescopes which are so sensitive that are now able to actually pierce through this dust and actually right towards the event horizon of this black hole. Uh, uh, and you have to coordinate, you know, telescopes all over the world to do this, indeed. Yeah, I mean, radio telescopes are quite powerful, aren't they? So, so why can't you use just one? Um, because you're using eight in very remote locations. Indeed, because actually you need a telescope the size of the entire Earth to have the resolution. The bigger the telescope, uh, the sharper your view. We need to see a mustard seed in New York from Europe. Uh, and that requires a big telescope. Now, nobody will going to pay a big telescope, will want to have a telescope the size of the Earth. So we use a trick by combining those telescopes, we can actually improve our resolution. It's not perfect. We're not covering the entire world. We'd like to have a few more, uh, especially in Africa, for example, that, you know, that gives us that resolution. And, and can you do this in real time, Heino? Because some of the telescopes, as you say, are quite remote, like the one in Antarctica, and they produce a huge amount of data, don't they? Oh, absolutely. And uh, the total amount of data is two to three petabytes. It's stored on hard drives. It's impossible to send this via the Internet right now, particularly from Antarctica, where there is now winter and there are no flights back, so we have to wait half a year to get all this data together and combine it. And if, if you are successful, what can we, as ordinary people, uh, learn from this? And why is it important to us? Well, so far, you've seen black holes in movies. It's sort of mystical objects. We'll try to put them into reality and really study and see that they actually as predicted. We have never seen one in the first place. And it's really exotic objects, because at the edge of a black hole, uh, time seems to come to a standstill and even light is being sucked into it and nothing can escape. So we have never seen that effect and we'll try to do this for the very first time. Now, is that something that we'll use tomorrow in our technology? We don't know yet, but we know that at least some of the most fundamental theories that we use every day in our cell phones, and actually this is quantum physics and general relativity, and it's used in our cell phones via the GPS system. They don't go together at the event horizon. So we hope that something new can be discovered there. It may take 50 years, it may take 100 years, maybe longer, but you know, there is still some deep mystery at exactly that location. All right, so Heiner Falker, good luck with the project and thanks for talking to Al Jazeera. Thank you.